Good morning, Wellspring. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. You like the wind out there? No. I know it messed up my hair on the way coming in. So you know the saying about March winds bring April showers and April showers bring May flowers. So what do May flowers bring? Pilgrims. Pilgrims. <laughs> bump. <clears throat> well. From your lips to God's ears. Well, good morning. My name is Vicki Avery, and I am one of the trustees on the board for Wellspring, and I am just pleased as punch to be blown in here today. I um, have a few announcements, as always, to begin. Our early birds are meeting Sunday mornings at 9.30 via Zoom. The link is in the weekly email or on the website. And the Thursday um, video ser series is continuing, and I've been hearing some amazing things about it. So the Joe Dispenza video series, 6.30 p.m. in the social hall or on Zoom. And folks are sticking around afterwards and doing prayer. So it's a very powerful bonding event. The upcoming speakers for March. Today we have our dear Dr. Edward. Um, next week, Reverend Kamataro will be coming from Albuquerque. Then the 20th, Edward is back up at the podium. And then on the 27th, Reverend Bram Watkins will be back with us. This Wednesday, wonderful event, the Wellspring Board Meeting. We just had audience participation at 6.30. Yes, that is correct. So it is going to be in person in the social hall. And it is open to the community, so please come, give your input. We also have an event coming up on the 19th of March. Um, Jean Geringer will be hosting her dowsing workshop from 1.30 to 4.30. In the social hall, the cost is $25. All are invited. And this uh, s Saturday that's coming up is going to be the pendulum dousing for health and well-being. Dousing is more than finding water. It is your connection to your higher self and to the source. And lastly, our prayer team is, remains ready to serve you. You may submit a prayer request via the web page. Our prayer team meets virtually on Tuesday afternoons at 4.15 to pray with you. You may consider going to your quiet space and uh, during that time to be in that energy. We know that we are one in spirit and the energy of prayer knows no limits. And now, time for the invocation. If you'd like to get comfortable in your chairs, and those of you at home, comfortable however that looks for you. We invoke Mother, Father, God, Great Spirit, the all that is, the divine, loving, spiritual force in the universe that is in, through, and around each of us. And this brings us all together, binds us as a spiritual family, and we give great thanks for knowing that we are one in spirit, and with spirit all things are possible. And we are grateful for this time as a Wellspring community to celebrate spirit and celebrate each other. And we say together, and so it is. Thank you. And if you would be seated. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> we will say our vision, mission, and affirmation. Oops, my bad. So yes, it is the song of joy. And if you'd like to stand, you're welcome to do that. Nancy taught us this a long time ago. So um, let's see if we can dig up our gray matter and try to sing this. Thank you. 
now with the state of affairs in the world, we need to remember that, that love binds us all. Let's remember Ukraine. So now it's time for our vision, mission, and affirmation. If you would please say with me, our vision to elevate spiritual consciousness in our world, our mission to support individual spiritual quests through celebration, study, counsel, loving fellowship, and service. And our affirmation, in this month of March, I affirm for myself and for Wellspring a vibrant blossoming of faith. I know we are a center of healing, light, and love. We connect with the community and support each other to expand into our best and highest good. The fruits of our faith are bountiful and beautiful. So it is. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce a wonderful, talented, amazing musician. So grateful you're back with us, Doug. Adams with a Z.
Thank you, Doug. That was beautiful. Now it's time for the reading. I haven't put a plug in for the Science of Mind magazine for a while, so I'm going to be reading from the Science of Mind magazine. This is a wonderful uh, way to assist you on your spiritual journey with a daily reading and other articles as well. So if you haven't subscribed to it, I invite you to look into that opportunity. Or pick one up, a single copy at the bookstore. So today's reading for Sunday, March 6th, is a quote from Anne Lamont. I do not at all understand the mystery of grace, only that it meets us where we are, but does not leave us where it found us. Confidentially, I call grace into my awareness. My faith is present for the animation of this moment, spirit dressed and ready to take on the day. Inspiration and curiosity has have set our course and fueled our daily sustenance with love, joy, and peace. Grace moves before me and checks all my blind spots, oils all my squeaks, and steadies my footing. There is plenty of time to be in the stillness, take a breath, and just pause before engaging in anything I do. I am just an echo of the eternal thing, a free and happy soul discovering myself one moment at a time. This beautiful soul is designed with the infinite in mind, carved into being by the same instrument that shaped the universe, lit by the same flame that fuels the stars. The great discovery of all I seek has been found right where I am, the perfect time and space to be the authenticity of the infinite one. I draw into my life the essence of spirit. I am focalized divinity in every aspect of my being. I trust the moreness of me to find in the right and perfect place. I trust the mystery of grace to know the ins and outs of its own divine activity through me. I do not question the wisdom of the universe, nor do I sit idly by wishing. In absolute faith, I take every step firmly. Absolute faith moves my soul, and as Emma Curtis Hopkins said, I need do nothing more but let myself be transformed. And so it is. Now, it's with great pleasure that I get to introduce Dr. Edward Burlbaugh to share his message with us today. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. Nice to see all of your smiling faces here, and hello to those on Zoom land. You're welcome to come join us in the sanctuary, unless you're from out of town. It might be a little hard, but we do offer snacks after service, so if it's taken a while to get here. Anyway, today my topic is called Reimage. Change your thinking, change your life. And so let's start out kind of with the back of this sentence, uh, change your life. What, what is your life? Well, is it your finances, relationships, your job or occupation? about our time, our habits? Did I leave anything out? Your health? How about your mood? All of those are actually part of your life. 
it's not one or the other to the exclusion of all the others. It's all of that. And I'm going to say, you know, we use that phrase a lot. I think it might be called a catchy phrase, right? It's really quite simple, but it's not quite easy. And even though it sounds nice, there might be some situations where it's not very helpful. You know, when you have a friend or someone who's going through something, you know, maybe they're wringing their hands and they're like, I just don't like what's happening right now. It's simple. Change your thinking. It'll change your life, right? Well, it may change my life if I say that. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that other statement when someone's really upset. Just calm down. It's like, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, so anyway. And this whole idea of changing your life by changing your thinking is more of a process. We can't really try this spiritual bypass idea. It's like, well, I'm sad. I'll just be happy. It doesn't quite work that way either. So if, uh, and I, maybe well, I've known some folks that I, I describe them as all is love, all is light. And they constantly go around in this, to me, my judgment, false scenario when under the surface they're really a mess, you know. But then how do we know what thinking we need to change? So change your thinking, change your life. Well, thinking is a rather broad definition, or think is. And if you go to the dictionary, it says uh, think or thinking is to have a particular opinion, belief, or idea about someone or something. And there's a string of other words. Uh, be under the impression, expect, imagine, anticipate, conjecture, guess, conclude, judge, presume, estimate, regard as, or maybe your viewpoint or perspective. But still, sometimes it's hard to get there from here, so to speak. Um, so maybe we need some smaller steps. Last Sunday, some of you know I went up to, I was in Albuquerque visiting my kids and grandkids, and I took Sunday morning off and I, from them, and I went to uh, the Rio Grande Center for Spiritual Living yeah, because Reverend Kamatara was speaking. And she was, her topic was from fear to faith. And she used an analogy that I'm going to kind of apply here as well. And the analogy was, is that you're, you're maybe down on, the, you're in this building that has a balcony and maybe a dance floor or whatever. And you're down in the dance floor, you're milling around with lots and lots of other people and other energies, so to speak. And it's very upsetting, perhaps. And where you'd really like to be is in the balcony, you know. So maybe if you think of it as fear is down here on the floor and faith is up in the balcony. And so it's probably true for all of us, but as she said, it was true for her. She can't get from fear to faith just by flying up to the balcony. You know, she has to go through some steps to get there. And I think that's true in our thinking as well. We have to get somewhere else from where we are, perhaps by small steps. And uh, any of those aspects of think thinking. Now, you all are familiar with uh, the hurricane season and how it becomes a news item on the weather. And we get to see the path or the track of the hurricane as it comes across the Atlantic and it's heading toward something, uh, but it's a few days out. And so they create this cone of possibilities or probabilities of where this hurricane could land. And they also, they have scientists who create, have created uh, models that show where it would go. And many times, you know, you have the cones, but you also have the various probable tracks. You know, and most of them are going this way, and they, when they hit land, they go off to the northeast. Very few of them, I do remember one time when one, I forget, there was like 15 different models. 14 of them were going to the, uh, through Florida and so forth, and one of them had, the, their model said it might go over and hit Texas. 
But I don't think any of the models said that when it hit landfall in Florida, it was going to jump over to Texas. And that's kind of like us. We have this track that we've been on, and we have a group of infinite possible futures. And there's only one spot that has any impact on any of these infinite possible futures. And what happens in the hurricane as it hits landfall, maybe it hits a little further north or a little south, and it goes up to a beach, it hits a beach, or it hits a forest, or it hits buildings, and that affects how its future track is. And you know when you uh, are looking at investment thing, it says past performance does not guarantee future results, right? <laughs> well, in our case, in many respects, past performance does or can affect or guarantee, I don't want to say guarantee future results, but that's the whole point of where I'm heading with this. But you know, if you're driving to Albuquerque and you're on the phone with somebody and you say, well, I'm just uh, on I-25, I'm just leaving TRC, and they could say, oh yeah, well, you'll be hitting San Antonio next, right? Most of you have driven to Albuquerque. That's a very high probability of a prediction. Well, perhaps you, at Hillsboro you take off, you turn west, you take Highway 52, you go up through the Gila in essence, and you head up north and you join uh, Highway 60 where the VLA is, and then you come through Magdalena and into Socorro. Well, you didn't go through San Antonio, right? But chances are you stayed on the interstate because it was easier. It's what you've always done. So if you want a micro example of how set we are in our habits and patterns, try going a different route to work every day for the next five days. Or if you have something, if work isn't in the picture, uh, try taking a different route to some place you go every day. Now for me, you know, I back out of the driveway and I turn either left or right. Right? You know, that pretty much determines the rest of my route. By the second or third day of this experiment, we've probably forgotten we were doing the experiment. And we just do what we always do. Because right? we're on autopilot. And you know, if we take the same route every day, we get to see the same stuff every day. And in our lives, we see the same stuff every day because we're taking the same path every day. Sam used to say, today is yesterday's newspaper. Today is the sum total of all of our past events, thoughts, feelings, emotions, actions, hurts, joys, and sorrows. So why can't you change your thinking? And I'm going to refer to a talk that Judy gave a few months back in which she discussed some of the physiological reasons why it's difficult to change our thinking. But in perhaps a less scientific way, I'm going to say we have ruts in our brains that are hard to get out of. Now, and it's not just a figure of speech, because every time we repeat an activity, it's connecting the same neurons and making and reinforcing the neural pathways for that activity. Someone says, what fires together, wires together. And this is an actual physiological event that's going on. And it's changing the physical structure of our brain. So we go back to our original question. Uh, what helps us get from here to there? Meaning, what helps us change our thinking? Because it's a great expression, but... Where's the beef? 
And I guess sort of as a prerequisite to this, I'm going to say is we have a spirit, uh, we have a, a vision, we have a desire. Some people might call it a spiritual discontent. And I would venture to say that if you're here today, you're probably here because you might want something more or different in your life than what you already have. It's just the kind of folks you are. So some of these small steps in my mind, maybe uh, more information in terms of thinking, how do we change our thinking? I always think back to group processes or, you know, where there's a group of people and I might start out at the beginning of the, the group and I'd say, I believe A, B, and C. Now what I do is I say, right now I believe A, B, and C, but as a result of the discussion that we're about to have, I reserve the right to change my mind. So don't judge me on what I'm saying now. Judge me on the new me as a result of our interaction. So in light of this new information, I've changed my opinion. And of course, this discussion, new information or more information brings a new or a different perspective. You've probably heard the story about, uh, and it's not a story because it's sometimes an event in everybody's life. You're driving down the interstate and somebody cuts you off. And the first thing you want to do is, you know, curse at them or whatever. And they're not being uh, uh, con uh, considerate of me, blah, 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 blah. Well, Consider the possibility that it's a man who's taking his, or a woman, it doesn't matter, taking the wife to the hospital because she's in labor. And she's saying, honey, I can feel the baby's head. And he's saying, hold on, I'm going to get you there. Do you really think that person is concerned about your feelings or even considering it? No. But is that any reason to be angry at him? Well, with that new information... Oh, wait a minute, I can understand that. Then there was a story about the kid who was, or the, the fellow who was laying on the lounge chair next to the pool getting some rays, and he keeps getting splashed. And maybe this happens over a matter of 30 seconds, right? He's getting splashed, and he's like, oh, some starts come on, he's splashed again. He says, okay, and he takes his sunglasses off, and he gets up, and he says, I'm gonna, oh my gosh, you're drowning, and he jumps in, and he rescues the kid. So that, I would think, would be kind of an aha change in perspective. I want to read something from The Power of Now. Because we say, what you choose to believe determines your experience. And those are two examples that I just gave of how you believe what's going on. And this is from chapter 9, page 177 in this book. It says, beyond happiness and unhappiness, there is peace. And his response to an earlier question is, do you think, or I'm sorry, do you truly know what is positive and what is negative? Do you have the total picture? There have been many people for whom limitation, failure, loss, illness, or pain in whatever form turned out to be their greatest teacher. It taught them to let go of false self-images and superficial ego dictated goals and desires. It gave them depth, humility, and compassion. It made them more real. And this is, again, you've heard this many times before. Whenever anything negative happens to you, there is a deep lesson concealed within it. Although you may not see it at the time, even a brief illness or an accident can show you what is real and unreal in your life, what ultimately matters and what doesn't. Seen from a higher perspective, conditions are always positive. To be more precise, they are neither negative nor positive. They are as they are. When you live in complete acceptance of what is, which is the only sane way to live, there is no good or bad in your life anymore. There is only a higher good 
which includes the bad. Seen from the perspective of the mind, however, there is good, bad, like, dislike, love, hate. So that's part of helping to change your perspective. And also then kind of fits along with this is change how you process what you are experiencing. Look at it different, analyze it, evaluate it, and do some what ifs. You know, we have a series or a number of core beliefs that we have. One of my core beliefs is that there's no such thing as a victim. Well, that's fine when it's you or you or you or you that's experiencing victimhood and it might be easy for me to make that judgment. But I was in a situation where I was feeling kind of victimized. This is a few years ago. And, you know, this is, uh, I don't know why I'm blah, blah, blah. And a little angel perhaps, or at least the words came to my mind and said, Edward, you don't believe in victims. So, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oops. If I don't believe in victims, how did I contribute or allow this situation to happen? It was a real change from woe is me to, hmm, I'm a participant in this. So if we look at it differently or we evaluate it differently, I also think there's a nice, I'll call it a sense of inquiry or curiosity about it. The what ifs that are going on, you know. Well, what if? Well, one of our core beliefs is that God is all there is. God is good all the time, everywhere. Well, what the heck is going on in the Ukraine? Well, our initial response doesn't have to be our final response. So make up a story that fits God into there somehow. And I'm going to make up my story for this. It may have nothing to do with your final story, if you will, but allow yourself the curiosity to explore the possibility that, as I just read here, all is neither good nor bad. It just is. So let's, here's my thought. Yes, Russia is invading Ukraine and a lot of people are dying and I'm not going to dismiss that. But I see the Ukrainian people is finding their backbone, standing up to Putin, and I even see, from what I'm reading or hearing, is that the population of Russia is not too pleased with what Putin's doing. What if this was Putin overextending himself politically and physically and he's going to be removed from power and someone less of a warmonger is put in his place. Hmm. That's the silver lining in a dark cloud. I don't know. I mean, a few months ago in last August, there was this big thing about Afghanistan and how the Taliban had taken Afghanistan over. Oh, that's pretty bad. I said, well, the problem is, as many times you can't put, what do they say? You can't put the something back in the bag. The genie back. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Well, think about the previous years that the women were becoming educated, were allowed to be educated, were allowed to drive. There were a lot of freedoms that were given to the women that suddenly the Taliban says, no more, stop it. Now, that's one genie that I don't think is going to be put back in the bottle, you know? And so in that sense, this, again, my story, I'm making it up. It may be true. It may not be true. But perhaps this is for the Muslim women to rise up and take their rightful place. Rightful is a judgmental word, I guess, but to take their place in the Muslim world. I don't know. But again, hmm. We don't have a vengeful God, 
So something good must be happening around here. And then I think my last statement to get you up the staircase a little bit is some tools. And uh, I don't like to admit this, but I have a lot of tools in my garage. And I don't use them most of the time. I was digging through a box the other day and found I had a router that I didn't know I had. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's that. Oh, yeah, I remember. I bought that. Bought it. It's like, okay, so let's laugh a little bit at ourselves because we all have lots and lots of tools. I mean, one type of tool is books, right? And you hear me stand up here and talk about my favorite books and I read from them and so forth. And, you know, every one of us has our favorite tools. We have our favorite books, and some of us have walls and walls of books that we've read on self-help. And we're probably not following any of them. I submit that if you picked up one of those and did the exercises that were in it, you'd probably be further along than reading that. Oh yeah, those are neat exercises. Here's another book. Oh yeah, those are neat exercises, or whatever. You know, the Byron Katie book, uh, Doing What Is, or uh, Loving What Is, she, she has something she calls Doing the Work. You know, well, that goes much further than Byron Katie. We've got totally the power of now. There's kind of, there may not be a workbook here, but there's work that could be done out of this book. So starting and starting and starting and starting doesn't get us very far. So the other kinds of tools there are, are classes, and many of us have taken classes, and there's workshops. And not being totally negative about what we do or don't do, but we have things also, like book study groups, uh, early birds. That's a book study group. What does that do for us? Well, that adds some understanding we didn't have before. There's discussion among like-minded individuals. It builds a sense of community among that group. You know, a church is made up of small communities. It's not made up of everybody doing the same thing. It's, it's not one thing for everybody and everybody kumbaya about it, no. And now we have the Joe Dispenza video series. That's a different, entirely different group, well, not totally a different group, but a, a different group than the early birds group, studying a few different things. We have. We have seven people that are online. Uh, I think six of them are from out of town. One of them is from out of the country, if I recall, joining that. And that series gives us understanding and proof how it actually works in our brain. I think that's really cool. He does talk about a tool called meditation, which probably most of us have not done in our life or very much in our life. But meditation can actually change your DNA, change how your DNA is expressed. Anyway, we invite you to join that if you choose to. It's probably not too late. Uh, you know, we do have Saturday afternoon Course of Miracles. And I just so I knew... Uh, so I wouldn't be telling an untruth. I got online and there's uh, any number of book study groups you can do online. Amazing. And they're not all, you know, but there's, there's art online. There's anyway, just go on meetup and look for book study group. If you want to study, oh, I mean, there were several that I like. <laughs> oh, it's two o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. I guess not, but... They're out there. And uh, just to add that there seems to have been a real need or interest in the Thursday evening. So once we finish this 12-week course, we're probably going to take a, a brief pause and then we're going to start something else for Thursday evenings. So if you want to change your life, you need to change your thinking. And if you want to change your thinking, then you need to do something different for yourself.
And so it is. So, thank you, thank you. So let's just take some time now here and uh, we'll do a little prayer. And as we're wont to do, we usually set an intention for the prayer. And in addition to the intention of health and abundance, peace of mind for those of us in our immediate vicinity, our friends and our family. We also set an intention for peace on earth. We are in a universe that is a sum creation of the one spirit. There is nothing in this universe that is not of spirit. This spirit, this divinity, this God, whatever word you're comfortable with, is all-knowing, almighty, is creative, and many more of the omnis, as we say, the omniscience, omnipresent, and so forth. And as we are made of the same spirit stuff, we have these same qualities, limited only by our faith. So for this moment, let's set our thinking mind aside. Let's just know of that infinite potentiality available to all of us as co-creators in this universe, as co-creators on the earth, in this world, in our community, and in our congregation, and in our friends and family. And so from this point of co-creation, we accept for ourselves inner peace, deep inner peace. We hold that the divine is expressing in perfect right order in our lives and in the lives of everyone we know and those we don't know and on the entire planet. The divine is expressing, is gaining experience. The individuals involved are gaining experience, learning perhaps to go deep and touch that deep inner peace, that deep inner quality that is their own divinity. And so we specifically also see this prayer developing everyone in our community who's dealing with issues of, of health or abundance, doesn't matter what. We just know the power of prayer. We know that this goes out to everyone as even as we think their name, we think of them without a name. This goes out to them. It lifts them a little bit. It allows them to see more clearly who they really are this magnificent being that they truly are. And from that point of accepting their magnificence, all the other issues fall away. Even if it is for just an instance, it has changed their lives, it has changed their thinking, it has changed everything about them. They cannot go back. They cannot go back to sleep because we hold for them a space for them to wake up. So we give great thanks that we even believe this. We give thanks for this philosophy. We give thanks for what, what we know. We give thanks for the sharing 
as we just place this prayer into the law, into the mind of God, and we just say, God, it's, it's all yours. It's out of my control. It's all in your love. And so it is. So now we have some music, and I guess we have a, a duo here. All right. We can have more of a duo, more than a duo. We can have a group sing. I think you'll probably know the chorus to this song, and I hope you'll join in and sing with us. Everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn and a time to every purpose under heaven a time to build up a time to break down a time to dance a time to mourn a time to cast away stones a time to gather stones to Together. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. A time of love, a time of hate. A time of war, a time of peace, a time that you may embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. In Spanish, a todas las cosas gira, gira, gira. Hay temporada, giro, gira. Mira, y un tiempo para todo bajo el cielo. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to win, a time to sow, a time to go, a time to wait, a time for peace. I swear it's not too late To everything Turn, turn, turn There is a season Turn, turn, turn And a time To every purpose Under heaven Thank you, Doug. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you, everybody.
Yes. Thank Barry. Yes. Uh, Vicky's handing out something, and I just want to quickly uh, go over this and talk to you a little bit about it. Uh, if you recall, we had a visioning, a community visioning a, a few weeks ago when Kamatara spoke last. And uh, that was a culmination of the community, the board, and the spiritual leadership team all doing visioning at separate times, although obviously some of us on the board, for example, and on the spiritual leadership team visioned in, in all three times. And so Kamatara took the words that we had come up with and put them into affinity diagram. And this one, uh, you can pass it up here to these folks too. I think we have enough, hopefully. Uh, this is in a hearts uh, diagram. And uh, how you read this is the larger words are the ones that have been spoken of most in the visioning. And so there are a couple things you can do. Take this home with you, please. You don't have to learn it all right now. But it's kind of interesting to, to look and see how some of the words end up next to each other. And as far as visioning is concerned, uh, oh, let me, one other thing. If you recall this month's affirmation, we uh, said it earlier, Reverend Kamatar actually put to, that together based on some words from our visioning. So you're also welcome to take this sheet home, if you wish to, and say the affirmation every day. Um, at any rate, it fits on with this, or fits together with this. And it's probably, visioning is probably something we need to do quarterly. It's not a one and done kind of thing. And to see how it evolves. Um, this is part of the process we talked about in our board meeting about uh, creating or allowing Wellspring's future. We know we can't just keep going where we are. We need to evolve in the direction that spirit is taking us. Do all of you, I know you've said it a hundred times, if you've been here for more than two years, our mission, right? Can you? That's our vision. Thank you. Our mission to support individual spiritual quests through celebration, study, counsel, loving fellowship, and service. And I just want to point out that such things as the Thursday night video series and early birds actually fit in with our, within our mission statement. Sunday service, of course, does as well, but we're more than just Sunday service. So now I'm going to sit down. I was going to say shut up and sit down. That's <laughs> That might be rude. So, uh, yeah, and let uh, Vicki come back up here for the remainder of the service. Thank you, Redford. Thank you gentlemen for that beautiful music and all of you who sang along. So <clears throat> we acknowledge the gifts that we receive our virtual and in-person gifts. We give a great thanks for the offerings already given and for those that we will be receiving because we know that that giving and receiving are both part of the one flow. And we affirm that we are also part of that flow. We bless these gifts and know they are multiplied throughout our community. There's a number of folks that have been involved in uh, today's uh, production. So thank you for your contribution. And we're grateful for their service. And we thank all of you here and out in Zoom land for joining us today as well. And lastly, if you'd like to stay around um, afterwards in Zoom to visit or join us over in the social hall. So now if you'd please stand and read with me the benediction followed by our congregational song. Spirit in the midst of us is mighty. Joy, peace, and eternal life are our true nature and flow through us into the world, and so it is.
good deal to say it too sometimes. Yeah. So if you if you would give us the word. I knew yellow. <laughs> it could be the word by the way, yellow. We could do this in the last one, but I can't play I can't play the other one. Love binds us all. Love binds us all. Good, good. I've done many a 